So every relationship needs connection. And each and every day, we all get great opportunities to connect with our partners if only we were present in the moment. So learn to take frequent time off to spend and connect with your partner. Learn to frequently take time off to check in with your partner. Because you not only need physical connection, but you also need to have emotional connection. Today I'm gonna to share with you 17 ideas, new ways, proven ways that can help improve your relationship. If you're ready, I'm ready. So last week we began the series by sharing with us the five things uh, that you need uh, to do to strengthen your relationship. Today, I'm going to share the next five. And then on the next video, next Friday, I'm going to share the last uh, seven. If you're new here, my name is Sen Shadi. My wife and I started this channel to help Christian couples navigate their relationship issues and date well, preparing for marriage so that they can have a better marriage experience we don't have tons of experience uh, in this area but we are willing and happy to work alongside you to help you have a better relationship if you desire to be part of our community consider subscribing hitting that notification bell so that you will not miss on any of our future episodes for those who have been here and are part of our community hey karibu sana we love you and we really appreciate uh, the support so Without further ado, let's start with the video for today. So the first one for today, we are, we are calling it number six, which is a continuation of last week's video. So if you haven't watched them again, check them here or in the description below. So number six is this, catch the little foxes. Let me explain what that means because this is very, very important. In every relationship, there are those small, small things that really, really are a bother in your relationship. Small arguments, small issues, uh, small habits that are becoming uh, a threat in your relationship. If you don't catch those things when they are still young, they might grow and become a huge problem. The Bible says in the book of Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15, that catch for me the little foxes before they destroy the vineyard. Catch for me the little foxes. So we need to do this. We need to be able to catch those little, little things before they become big things. When we got married and we were preparing for premarital counseling, there are a lot of questions that I had. And one of the questions is, what happens between yes, I do, and I can't take it anymore? What, is, what happens to those couples that, you know, started so well, and yet one day they say, I cannot take it anymore. And I, I am convinced it is the little things that keeps piling up and one day you uh, will say that you won't be able to take it anymore. So catch them now. Catch them now. You know, take time to know to identify those things and deal with them right now before they become big issues. Once again, guys, catch the little things. For some of you, maybe it might be a habit. It might be pornography, you know, that you're struggling with right now. And the next is that, guys, we're going to be having, it's going to be uh, about pornography and masturbation, which uh, is a huge story. And someone actually asked us a question and we'd like to address it in a whole uh, new series. So be sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified once uh, that video is up. So make sure you catch on these small, small foxes, be it pornography, be it things that you're watching, be it, uh, uh, you know, uh, relationships that are unhealthy. Catch those things and deal with them now. Because if you wait, this might be big things, all right? So let's go to number seven. Invest daily in your emotional bank. The difference between happy and unhappy couples is the way they manage the balance of their emotional bank account. And what that means is it is the positive and the negative interaction. If a couple has more positive interaction than negative interaction, then that is a happy relationship. And for those who have more negative interaction than positive interaction, 
that is an unhappy relationship and what that means is the more you deposit in your partner uh, by interacting with them nicely by investing in them by being thoughtful by talking to them nicely by treating them nicely by checking in with them you are depositing in the emotional bank and the Gottman principle says that for every one negative interaction you need five positive interaction to balance that account <clears throat> let me repeat that for every negative interaction you need five positive interaction to balance that account so if you have treated your partner once badly you will need to treat them five times <laughs> You have to treat them well five times to balance that one interaction. And I'll link below an article that uh, was written by the Gottman uh, Institute. And you can read it and find it, it is very helpful, uh, especially for couples who desire to have a strong relationship. So balance those. Have more positive interaction in your relationship have positive vibes treat each other nicely talk to each other nicely be thoughtful to each other write each other good messages the more you do this the more you will create and improve the energy uh the emotional energy uh, of your relationship so the first one we said that it, you need to catch the little fox these are things that are drawing your energy uh, away from your uh, from your relationship this one now we are saying you need to invest more things you need to do more things that are bringing in and they are lifting the energy of your relationship. If every time you meet as a couple, you are having bad vibes and bad energy, then that relationship will struggle. So all you need to do right now is start changing that narrative and start having good vibes. And, and you know, don't just complain. Don't just talk about things that went wrong. Sometimes just meet and talk about the things that have gone right. You know, sometimes celebrate each other. Remember, what you celebrate will be repeated. The things you celebrate will be repeated. So if you're celebrating your partner for one thing, they will tend to actually repeat and doing more and more good stuff. So ensure that you are thoughtful and you are investing daily in the emotional bank. Why is this important? Okay. The many times that you'll find yourself in a fix, that you have done a mistake. And if you have done a mistake and it was actually a mistake, and you have been depositing in your partner's emotional bank, and you have more positive things that, are being, that have happened, when you find yourself in a mistake, this is not an intentional thing that you have done. It is just a mistake. You found yourself, maybe you did something and you have had an argument. This will help you a lot when you have been depositing good things into your partner. When we got married, I asked myself, what happens between yes, I do and I can't take it anymore? Because there are so many couples who are, you know, leaving each other. There are so many couples who are, you know, um, no longer, <laughs> uh, they no longer wanted to stay with each other. And I wonder what happens between, yes, I do, and I can't take it anymore. And I believe that when we have those small, small things growing and we are not investing, we are only having negative vibes in the relationship, then that relationship isn't going nowhere. So number eight, forgiveness and patience let me say this quietly and say it gently ask any married couple what has been a pillar in their relationship and 99% of them will tell you this forgiveness and patience when you get married to someone you realize there are some things that force for many days and many months or even many years you're going to be fighting about and there are many times that you will need to forgive each other there are many thousands of times that you will need to forgive each other and you will need to be patient with each other people don't change overnight and if you want your partner to readjust some things it doesn't happen overnight you have to be patient with them when we were doing our premarital counseling i remember 
uh, we had this, uh, you know, uh, um, a motto where we used to say that work on me, pray for them. That we continue as much as possible to work on ourselves and being patient with with each other and being forgiving uh, with each other. You cannot survive a relationship without forgiveness. You cannot because you are going to be hurt. You are going to be disappointed. You are going to be, you know, disappointed so bad that there are times that you'll want to let go. There are times that you want to leave. But over and over, you will need to forgive each other. And you'll need to be patient with each other. And remember for those who are being forgiven, that change is not change until there is change of behavior. That we're not just forgiving you and forgiving you and you're not changing it. Then you need to work on something. You need to change. But in my end, I need to continue forgiving you over and over and over and having healthy conversation and the reason why we started this channel is to help you have those healthy conversations that even though I have forgiven you that you need to work on yourself even though that I'm patient on you that you need to be doing something to work on yourself you have and must be forgiving and Jesus actually said this that forgive 70 times 7 and it's an interesting thing that Jesus is telling that, us that we need to embrace this idea of forgiveness because we will forgive and we will also be forgiven. That it will not just be us forgiving. There are times that we need our partners to forgive us. So if you want to have a strong and healthy relationship, there must be forgiveness. All right. And this brings us now to uh, the next um, uh, the next thing that we need to do uh, if we want to have a better relationship. Number nine, pray for one another. This sounds very cliche, <laughs> but it is so important. And you'll, for those who are now, you know, preparing for marriage, you will realize that you will, your partner has the highest potential to make you a prayer warrior because they will frustrate you sometimes. Because they will, you know, mess up with your emotion and mess up with your head. And it is in those times that you need to go and kneel down and pray for them. It is in those times that you need to kneel down and pray for them. There are times that you will argue about one thing over and over. It is in those times that you need to go back and kneel and pray to God. And ask God to work on yourself. And also, as you pray for your partner. Friends. Every relationship needs prayer because there are some things that you and your partner will not be able to sort. That those things will need God's intervention. There are some of you who will get into a relationship uh, and maybe someone have, uh, has come into the relationship or into the marriage with some baggages, with some emotional baggage or with some habits or with some things that will need intervention from God for them to be delivered it is in those moments that you will need to pray it sounds very cliche it sounds very uh, simple but it is super powerful especially for Christian couples and the last one for today is prioritize your partner <laughs> I cannot uh, you know <laughs> insist with this uh, enough you have to prioritize your partner. I love what Jimmy Evans says, uh, you know, uh, that marriage only works in first place. That if you're in a relationship, you must be prioritizing one another. You must give each other time. I, I, I hear a couple say that, oh, we are dating and, you know, I haven't spoken to my boyfriend for two weeks. That's not a relationship. Because if you're too busy for your partner, then you're not ready for that relationship. You must create time. You must find time if you want to have a strong, healthy relationship. Today, ask yourself, if you have given your employer eight hours, you know, you have given yourself maybe two hours, you have slept for eight hours, you have given Facebook an hour, you have given WhatsApp another two hours, 
and you have not given your boyfriend, you know, given your girlfriend, you have not given your partner time, then there is a problem. Then there is a problem. You must prioritize your partner. If you want to have a good relationship, yes, you, if you want to have a good relationship, you must prioritize. Find time. If something is important, find time. Find time to have conversation, talk, call each other, text each other. There are so many relationships uh, that you know uh, the husband and the wife have not even, uh, when you look at their text messages, you will see that it is bill after bill after bill after bill. They are always sending each other texts about bills and about things that needs to be done. No, friends. We need to, to create time for our partner. Send them a good message. Take even if it's five minutes just to construct a good message and send it to your partner. The more you prioritize your partner, the more something is important to you, you start giving it time. The more you give it time, the closer you get to it. The closer you get to know it, the better you get to know it, the better and the deeper are you get. And if you do this, these five things, plus the things that we talked about last week, then I am convinced that your relationship will improve tremendously. So friends, as you think about that, as you think about your relationship, think about those five things that I've said today. The first one is check and watch out the little foxes. The second one, I said um, that as you watch the little foxes, you need to invest in your emotional bank. As you invest in your emotional bank, you need to start forgiving each other. As you're forgiving each other, you need to pray. The more you forgive, the more you need to pray. Because when you pray, God gives you uh, more grace to forgive. And the last one, you prioritize each other. When you prioritize each other, these four other things will be easy to do. These four other things will, uh, will, will now start coming out and you will become better at them uh, if you continue prioritizing each other. But first, you must have agreed, as, as we said last week, you must have agreed what the goal is. You must have agreed uh, to be in the relationship. You must have agreed uh, to work together in the relationship. Because you need, if you're investing these five things, you need to have said yes into the relationship and that, and start working uh, together in, into it. So guys, these are the five things for today. Uh, let me know in the comment which one you, you found surprising, uh, which one you found helpful. Um, and uh, as we talk about next week, uh, on Friday, uh, be sure to check it out because we are going to post the next seven as we finalize this three-part series. Otherwise, guys, thank you very much. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with a friend. Bye-bye.